Hello, friends. Thank you so much for leading again this week. Uh, we are on our final week of new divisions for uh, our series on covering the books of the Bible and the meta narrative of, of Scripture. This is for August 7th, and we are covering the final um, general letters. And last, so we spent two weeks talking about Paul's letters. First week was on his written specifically to churches. And then that second week we did cover Thessalonians and then his other letters to Timothy and Titus, etc. cetera, uh, Philemon. This week we are talking about uh, the re remaining books that are um, individual letters, Peter, John, all of those, and then also including Revelation. And the point this week is that even though the Bible ends with Revelation, um, Scripture's not finished. Scripture's finished, but Scripture's not. Our time is not finished. We haven't learned everything we have to learn. Jesus is still teaching us. The Holy Spirit is still active and, and teaching and, and all of that. And so though Scripture, that book closes, nothing else is closed. And it, and it closes in such a way that these last books... The letters from Paul, um, the letters, the letters, the other general letters are all teaching us how to live in Christ. And that goes on and on and on. Those are 100% applicable to us now. We are still practicing living our faith in Christ um, because that last book, Revelation, is talking about end time and, and what's going to happen with that. And we don't really know, but we know that that God promises that one day there's going to be a new heaven, a new earth, and that there will be no more suffering and that those who have believed in him will be with him and celebrate life eternally with him perfectly. So we know that, and that is the end, but that book being written was prophecy hasn't happened yet. And so we look forward to that. And until that time, we continue to learn and to walk in him and to share his love with others so that they can share in that time with us in a good way. So, um, talking about those books, we will start with Hebrews. It is the first of the general letters not written by Paul, and it uses scripture specifically to point again to Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God. Um, he's still trying to... Um, help the Jewish people understand Jesus was the Messiah. He really was that guy. And he's, and, and this author is going back and, and reteaching and reteaching and reteaching um, because that's still something that the Jewish individuals today don't, don't believe unless they're Messianic Jews. So, uh, and it's also, he's encouraging those believers, uh, those early Christians who, who are believers, obviously Christians um, to keep their faith. And to maintain that faith in Jesus. So then we move on to James. And he is urging Christians to live godly lives. And he goes through a whole lot of very practical, very specific things in his book. I actually really like James. Um, Peter, he writes two letters to a church. Um, but to the people within that that are still completely applicable. Talking about encouraging those believers to stand strong under persecution. We have to remember that during this time, the early church is hugely persecuted. It's under huge attack. And he also writes another one talking about being on guard against false teachers and, and how to recognize and how to walk and all of those things. Um, what we talk about kids with kids even today of the imperative, the to chew before you swallow. Don't just, don't just believe something because I said it or someone in authority said it. You have to, you have to study and pray and research that um, for yourself to know, was that true? So then finally, or not finally, John and his three letters, um, he talks also about false teachers and not wanting the believers to fall for their lies. Uh, and then he's he is trying to, to pull some of those folks who have struggled with that and some others back to Jesus and point them back to Jesus. No, Jesus is the way, the only way. Um, he is life and he is love. And then also, again, encouraging them to keep the faith to maintain what they know, to grow, and to keep walking. 
Um, Jude is one of the shortest books in scripture. It's only one chapter, so it doesn't even have a chapter number. Um, and it is all about uh, salvation that we can have in Jesus and warning against false teachers. You can see the total recurring theme here that we still deal with, right? Of people who try to teach things contrary to scripture. They're pulling it out so it kind of sounds right, but it isn't. Um, they're dealing with exactly the same things. That, you know, just makes me think from Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, we've been dealing with the same issues in our world since the fall. Um, so finally, then there's Revelation. John wrote the book of prophecy, um, talks about false teachers that, that they've been dealing with and have, have taught against. They're gonna have to deal with what comes up. They're gonna receive their consequences and be held responsible. Um, talks about how big a mess that sin has made of the world and that God's gonna fix it and he's gonna make it clean and fresh again. Uh, and then there's lots of things in there that we don't understand. We certainly do not know when it's gonna happen or exactly how it's gonna happen. That's a prophecy, it's a promise of what's to come. And so we wait for that, um, encouraged by that. And so we will wrap it up with just encouraging the kids that even though scripture closes, the story doesn't close, it, it goes on. We will spend this week doing some review questions that comes with the material. Um, if I can get it to work on screens, we'll do it that way. Not 100% confident that I can, which means we'll use it just from paper and ask questions and kind of make it maybe a four corners game kind of thing. Um, so that's where we are this week. Thank you.